It's that time of year again. The Atlantic hurricane season is ramping up, and with it comes a sense of anticipation and caution along the coastlines. Every year, as summer reaches its peak, the Atlantic transforms into a vast stage for nature's most powerful storms. The energy in the air is almost palpable, as meteorologists and residents alike keep a watchful eye on the horizon. After a quiet start, the tropics are waking up as we move into the peak months from mid-August to October. This is the period when the Atlantic is most active and the conditions become just right for storms to form and intensify, the atmosphere becomes more unstable, and the ocean's warmth provides the perfect fuel for hurricanes to develop. This is when the most powerful storms typically form, and 2025 is right on schedule. Each year meteorologists look for patterns and signals that indicate how active the season might be. And so far, all signs point to a busy few months ahead. The Atlantic Basin is primed for activity, and history has shown that some of the most memorable hurricanes have emerged during this window. The Atlantic Ocean has been storing up heat all summer, fueling the potential for hurricanes. Warm sea surface temperatures are a critical ingredient, and this year the ocean is running even hotter than usual in some areas. This extra warmth acts like high-octane fuel, giving developing storms the energy they need to grow rapidly and become more intense. Meteorologists are now watching satellite images closely for any signs of new storms. Advanced technology allows them to track even the smallest disturbances, monitoring their progress as they move across the Atlantic. Every swirl of clouds, every cluster of thunderstorms, is analyzed for potential development. For coastal residents, this is a familiar pattern. Calm early on, then a sudden burst of activity. The quiet days can be deceiving, lulling communities into a false sense of security before the weather shifts dramatically. It's a cycle that repeats year after year, reminding everyone of the power and unpredictability of nature. It only takes one storm to make a season memorable, so preparedness is key. Families review their emergency plans, stock up on supplies, and make sure their homes are ready for whatever may come. Local officials urge everyone to stay informed and take warnings seriously, because a single hurricane can change lives and landscapes in a matter of hours. Right now, a cluster of thunderstorms in the eastern Atlantic is showing classic signs of development. These early stages are critical, as meteorologists look for signs that the system is organizing and gaining strength. The atmosphere is being watched closely for any shifts that could signal rapid intensification. What starts as a tropical wave off Africa can quickly grow into a major storm under the right conditions. These waves are often the seeds of powerful hurricanes, and their journey across the Atlantic is closely monitored. With warm waters and favorable winds, a simple disturbance can evolve into a formidable force of nature. This system is becoming more organized, tapping into that vast oceanic heat. As the storm draws energy from the warm waters below, its structure tightens and its winds intensify. The process can happen quickly, sometimes catching even seasoned forecasters by surprise. The next few days will be critical in determining its strength and path. Forecast models are run around the clock, projecting possible tracks and intensities. Small changes in wind patterns or ocean temperatures can make a big difference in where the storm goes and how strong it becomes. Let's dive into what's happening with this potential storm and explore what it could mean for the season ahead. With so many factors at play, understanding the science behind these storms is more important than ever. Stay tuned as we break down the latest developments and what you need to know to stay safe this hurricane season. The disturbance we're tracking is close to becoming a named storm. Aaron, the fifth of the season. The National Hurricane Center gives it a high chance of strengthening soon, possibly becoming our first hurricane of 2025. Located near the Cabo Verde Islands, this region is known for spawning some of the Atlantic's most powerful hurricanes. As Aaron moves westward over warm waters, it has plenty of fuel to intensify. Naming storms helps us communicate clearly about threats, especially as the season heats up. For now, the Cabo Verde Islands will see gusty winds and heavy rain. But the real story is Aaron's journey across the Atlantic. Over the next week, we'll use advanced forecasting tools to track its path and intensity. It's a complex dance between ocean and atmosphere, and our job is to keep you informed. Hurricanes are among the most powerful forces in nature, and their strength is deeply tied to the temperature of the ocean beneath them. For a hurricane to form and intensify, the sea surface must be at least 26.5 degrees Celsius, or about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This warm water acts as the primary energy source, fueling the storm's growth and power. This year, the Atlantic Ocean is running hotter than usual, with vast stretches of water reaching record-breaking temperatures. These abnormally warm waters are like high-octane fuel for developing storms, giving systems like Aaron the perfect environment to grow stronger and more dangerous. As the sun heats the ocean, more moisture evaporates into the atmosphere. The warmer the water, the more intense this process becomes, sending huge amounts of water vapor skyward. This moisture is the lifeblood of a hurricane, feeding its circulation and helping it organize into a powerful storm system. When conditions are just right, storms can undergo rapid intensification, jumping from a weak tropical storm to a major hurricane in just a day or two. This is a real risk in years like this when the ocean is so warm that storms can quickly tap into vast reserves of energy. The exceptional warmth we're seeing this year is part of a long-term trend of rising ocean temperatures, driven by climate change, but it's also being amplified by short-term climate patterns, like El Nino, which can push temperatures even higher in certain regions. When a tropical wave such as Aaron moves off the coast of Africa and travels westward over these unusually warm waters, it can rapidly gain strength. The extra heat and moisture in the air act like rocket fuel, allowing the storm to grow larger and more organized in a short period of time. What's especially concerning this year is the depth of the warm water. Instead of just a thin layer at the surface, the warmth extends deep below, providing a continuous supply of energy even as the hurricane stirs up the ocean. This means storms don't weaken as easily and can maintain their strength for longer. In previous years, hurricanes would often lose power after churning up cooler water from below, but with this year's deep ocean heat, storms like Aaron can keep drawing energy, remaining intense and dangerous as they move across the Atlantic. Scientists are closely monitoring the deep ocean heat content, as it's a critical factor in determining just how strong storms like Aaron can become. The combination of surface warmth and deep heat is setting the stage for potentially record-breaking hurricanes. As Aaron continues its journey across the Atlantic, meteorologists and scientists will be watching every development, tracking how the storm taps into this extraordinary ocean heat. The story of Aaron is a powerful reminder of how our changing climate is reshaping the forces of nature. Warm water is crucial, but a calm atmosphere is just as important for hurricane growth. Wind shear, changes in wind speed and direction, can tear storms apart. Earlier this season high wind shear kept storms weak, but now, conditions near Aaron are much calmer. Low wind shear allows the storm to build vertically and strengthen. With little atmospheric resistance, Aaron can develop a strong, symmetrical structure. This is the second major reason forecasters expect Aaron to intensify. Our models will keep analyzing wind shear along Aaron's path. If it stays low, the storm has a green light to grow. That's why it's vital to stay updated on the latest forecasts. Another key factor is the amount of Saharan dust in the atmosphere. Dry, dusty air from Africa can choke off storms, but this year, dust levels are unusually low. With a clean, moist environment, Aaron has a better chance to strengthen. The lack of dust removes a major obstacle, allowing thunderstorms to develop vigorously around the storm center. This year, we have a trifecta warm water, low wind shear, and little Saharan dust. When these align, hurricane development is almost guaranteed. Aaron is a textbook example of how quickly the Atlantic can come alive. All the right ingredients are in place for a powerful storm. We're watching closely as Aaron takes advantage of these perfect conditions. The big question on everyone's mind right now, where will Aaron go? As this powerful storm churns in the Atlantic, its future path is the focus of intense analysis and speculation. Communities along the coast are watching closely, hoping for answers. Forecasting hurricane tracks is always a challenge, even with today's advanced technology. Right now, our computer models are in good agreement, which gives us some confidence in the projected path. But, as with any storm, there's always a degree of uncertainty that keeps forecasters on their toes. At this point, Aaron is expected to move generally west to west-northwest, steered by a large area of high pressure known as the Bermuda High. This is a common pattern for Atlantic hurricanes, and it's one of the main reasons why storms often head in this direction. The Bermuda High acts almost like an invisible wall, guiding and sometimes even blocking storms as they travel across the ocean. Its strength and position can make a huge difference in where a hurricane ends up. 
Later in the forecast, a dip in the jet stream, a river of fast-moving air high above the Earth, could create an opening for Aaron to turn northward, away from land. This is a critical turning point that meteorologists are watching very closely. If this scenario plays out, Aaron would curve out to sea, sparing the coastline and gradually weakening as it moves over cooler waters. This is the best-case outcome for people living along the Atlantic seaboard, but timing is everything. If the trough is slower to arrive or weaker than expected, Aaron could be pushed closer to land, increasing the risk for coastal impacts. Even a small change in the atmosphere can have big consequences for where the storm goes. That's why we urge everyone to pay close attention to the storm itself, not just the forecast cone. The cone shows where the center might go, but impacts can be felt far outside those lines. Even small shifts in steering currents, those invisible forces that guide hurricanes, can mean big differences in who feels the effects. A slight wobble could bring heavy rain, strong winds or dangerous surf to areas that thought they were safe. For now, the most likely forecast favors a turn away from the U.S. coastline, which is encouraging news. But as we've seen before, things can change quickly, so it's important to stay alert and prepared. We'll continue to monitor Aaron's every move and keep you updated as the pattern evolves. Stay tuned for the latest information and remember, preparedness is key when it comes to hurricanes. Even if Aaron stays offshore, it can still create dangerous conditions along the U.S. East Coast. Powerful hurricanes generate massive waves that travel thousands of miles, bringing rough surf and rip currents to our beaches. These swells can arrive days before the storm, making the water hazardous even on sunny days. Rip currents are fast-moving channels that can pull swimmers out to sea, often catching people off guard. If you're heading to the beach, pay attention to flags and lifeguard warnings. Red flags mean the water is closed for a reason. Don't risk it. Even wading can be dangerous when surf is high. Most rip current deaths happen far from the storm itself. Respect the power of the ocean, even if the hurricane is hundreds of miles away. Enjoy the beach safely, and stay informed about changing conditions. Let's recap the 2025 hurricane season so far. As of August 11th, we've had four named storms, Andrea, Barry, Chantal and Dexter, all relatively weak and short-lived. High wind shear and Saharan dust kept early activity in check despite warm ocean temperatures. This led some forecasters to slightly lower their seasonal predictions. But hurricane forecasting is always evolving as conditions change. Now, wind shear is relaxing, dust is clearing, and the ocean remains warm. We're entering the peak season when most major hurricanes form. Aaron's development signals a shift to a much more active phase. The quiet start is over. Now is the time to stay vigilant. As we track Aaron and look ahead, it's clear this season will be busier than average. Forecasts call for more storms and hurricanes than usual, increasing the risk for everyone along the coast. Above average activity means more chances for land impacts, so preparation is crucial. Being prepared means knowing your evacuation zone, having a disaster kit, and a family communication plan. Check on neighbors who may need help, and stay informed with reliable weather alerts. Even if Aaron curves out to sea, it's a reminder to be ready for whatever comes next. The most active part of the season is just beginning. Stay tuned to updates from local officials and trusted sources. We'll be here to keep you informed every step of the way. Stay prepared and stay safe.